Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on select and appropriate display. Our objective is to select, organize, and construct appropriate data displays. And if we were to scan the lesson and predict two things we will learn about selecting an appropriate display, one of them would be which displays are used to compare data involving categories and another thing you may learn in this lesson are which displays are used to show change over time. And so as we look at our real world link, there are many different types of graphs that are used to display all kinds of statistical data. List all of the types of graphs you think of below. Well, I know a lot, and so let's go through a whole list. We could have a bar graph. We could have the line graph. We could have our box and whisker plot or just box plot. We could have a histogram. What about our circle graph, which is the same thing as a pie chart? We have a pictograph. And lastly, well, let's just stop here at line plot. So the graphs below display the total number of pounds of plastic recycled each week during a 10-week period in different ways. On the line below each graph, write the type of graph used. Well, in the first one, our bars are together. As you notice, there are no spaces between our bars. And we have intervals down here, 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39. We have those intervals. And so this is an example of a histogram. And in our second one, we have a circle graph thingy. So we'll call this a circle graph. So that answers question one. Which display more easily shows the number of weeks the class collected between 30 and 39 pounds of plastic? Well, let's look. We have 30 to 39 pounds of plastic at three weeks. We have 30 to 39, 30% of the time. I have no idea how many weeks that is. Well, actually, it's a 10-week period. And so if we do 30% of 10 weeks, that's 0.3 times 10, which is uh, 3. Well, I don't know about you, but I think the histogram, just looking over, was an easier way of showing how many weeks the class collected between 30 and 39 pounds. Here we had to calculate 30% of 10 weeks. Not that that's hard to do, but it's easier looking at the histogram. Which display more easily shows the percent of time that 40 to 49 pounds of plastic was recycled? Well, this was one week out of 10, and so one over 10 is the same thing as 10 over 100, which is 10%. All right. Here, if we looked 40 to 49, this is 10%. Hmm. Again, I don't know about you, but I think the circle graph more easily shows that percentage. And so our key concept today is to select an appropriate display. We're going to use a bar graph to show the number of items in specific categories. A box plot shows measures of variations for a set of data. 
It's also very useful for large sets of data. We worked in box plots in the previous lesson where you could see the different quartiles and you can see the box having 50% of the data. So you could see the spread of variation in the centers and things like that. A circle graph is great to compare parts of the data to the whole. You know, when we have our percentages, it's, it's nice to see that in a circle graph. A double bar graph compares two sets of categorical data. A histogram shows frequency of data divided into equal intervals. A line graph shows change over a period of time, while a line plot shows frequency of data with the number line. So here are our key questions when deciding what type of display to use. First, what type of information is given? Second, what do you want the display to show? And third, how will the display be analyzed? Those are the three things we need to consider when selecting an appropriate display. And so as we look at our first guided example, select an appropriate display to show the number of boys of different age ranges that participate in athletics. Well, our key here that I would lock into different age ranges. That means we're showing an interval. And whenever we're showing an interval, our histogram is going to be the best choice. And you can see the one that they kind of sketched in below. So you could see the different age ranges, 5 to 9, 10 to 14, 15 to 19. And so now we're asked, select an appropriate display for the percent of students in each grade at a middle school. Well, here I lock in 2%. And for percents, our circle graph compares parts of the data to the whole. Well, you know, 10% 10 is 10, that part over the whole, 10%. So I would use for this one a circle graph. In our second guided example, select an appropriate type of display to compare the percent of ethanol production by state. Justify your reasoning, then construct the display. What can you conclude from your display? Well, we have ethanol production by state per year, Iowa, Nebraska, Illinois, Minnesota, Indiana, and other. And you can see the millions of gallons of ethanol that's produced by state per year. And we're asked to compare the percent. Well, that again is parts to a whole, which means a circle graph. And you can see the circle graph that they drew in. Now, in order to calculate this, in case you need to draw your own circle graph, I would add up all the millions of gallons here. And that sum is 13,608. And then for Iowa, for example, I would take 3,534 and divide by 13,608. And this gets us about 25.97%. And when you can look at Iowa here on the graph, it indicates 26%. So that's how they got that 26%. And it takes up about 26% of the graph. Just one more example, just in case, if we look at Minnesota, you would take the 1,102 for Minnesota, divide by 13,608, and according to my sister, not too many people up where she's at in Minnesota say Minnesota, so I should probably stop in case anyone up in the great state of Minnesota is watching this. This gets us about 8%. And sure enough, for Minnesota, it's hard for me to say it normal, is the 8%. So as we look at our final got it question of the year, The table lists the ticket prices for school musicals during recent years. Select an appropriate display to predict the price of a ticket 
in 2013. Justify your reasoning, then construct the display. What can you conclude from your display? Well, we're looking to show change over a period of time. Ticket price is changing over a period of time. And if you look back at page 840, if we're looking to show change over a period of time, the best graph for this is a line graph. So a line graph would be an appropriate graph because the data is organized by time. So the type of information we're given, we have time and money. We want the display to show how the money changes over time. And we're going to analyze it to predict. And so that's how we can conclude that a line graph is the best choice. And now, in the show your work part, we get to make a line graph. And so if I draw in my axes here, we're going to then label. We'll have zero dollars down here. And we need to have, we'll count by twos, two dollars, four dollars, six dollars, and lastly, eight dollars. And then, for our years, we will have 2009, 2010. 2011, 2012, and 2013. And as we plot these in, 2009 was $5. That's going to be right around here in between our 4 and our 6. 2010 is $5.50, so just a little bit higher, but still not above the 6. 2011 was six fifty, so a bit above the 6. And 2012 was $7, so as close to between 6 and 8 as you can as we freehand this graph here. And now to connect our line, it might come up to look something like this. And as we label this, this axis was our price in dollars, and this axis were our years. We should put a nice title here, such as musical ticket prices what can we conclude from our display well I would say that the graph shows there is a steady increase of ticket sales or of ticket prices over time. And if we wanted to make a prediction here for 2013, just kind of looking at the general trend of the line, you might say, okay, maybe right here is where the graph would go. And where is that? Well, looks to be maybe a little under eight dollars. So, what if we called that, you know, seven seventy-five, seven dollars and seventy-five cents? So we can say we pr a prediction based on the graph for twenty thirteen is, and we'll just kind of guesstimate here, $7.75. And that is it for this lesson on Select an Appropriate Display. And it is also the last video for our textbook.
Thank you for all the hard work that you put in this year. Hope you enjoyed it. And so as we wrap out this year, I was thinking of a creative way to end this video. And for me, there's no better way than to tell an amazing math joke. And that is, why is eight afraid of seven? Now, seven, eight, nine. Good luck, everyone.